we're back out here at the Big Lake once again. And today we're talking about my super secret trick that I look for when I'm out on the lake that helps me keep catching fish while other anglers are struggling to get bites. Stick around, you don't want to miss this one. Ooh, there we go, I got him. Oh, that's good. That's a big fish. That's a big fish. Stay down. Told you. The old Smithwick rattling rogue. And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations! If you would like to have a chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing. And yes, I'm not wearing any sunglasses today. That's because they're right back there going for a permanent swim. You know, sometimes that happens. Those things happen. And that's kind of what I'm talking about today. That's kind of the topic of today's video, where whenever we have a really rough day on the water, nothing seems to go right, and we can't find fish. We know they are there. We know there's fish all around us, but we just can't get any bites. And I've noticed anglers struggle with this many times, and I struggle with it a lot of times. So there's something that I decided that I was going to do. I wanted to find that catch-all trick, the thing that I could pull out of my back pocket and use whenever those fish, they're just not biting, even though I know they're there. And that is, well, I look for the slack water. I know that is a contradiction in terms. You hear a lot of times, anglers will tell you, wind helps you get a bite. You want a windy day. A windy day means that those fish are biting. But on this lake, no. On this lake, when the wind starts kicking up, that bite just flatlines. It dies, okay? So I have to compensate for that. If you notice in a lot of the videos that I'm shooting, right, when those fish are biting, it's pretty calm water. Now, there are exceptions. There are days when those fish are biting and it's windy, and, but usually it's overcast and windy. You know, there's a storm front blowing through, something to that effect, not just a regular windy day. If it's a regular day, a windy day, we got clear skies and that wind is blowing and there's some chop on the water. Chances are when I see that, I know it's going to be rough out there. So what do I do? You know, I still have to come out here. I still have to make content. I still have to put together things that make exciting videos, interesting videos, something I can show you guys. What do I do? Well, I'll be honest. On this lake and in other lakes in South Mississippi, this works on the Hatchet Lake. This works on the Little Lake. This works on the Trophy Bass Lake, especially the Trophy Bass Lake. It works on Lake Columbia, on Bill Waller, on a lot of these fisheries that I use around here when I'm making content. You know, slick calm water means I know it's going to be a good day and I know I'm going to be able to use a variety of techniques and be able to show a variety of baits, lures, and techniques that those bass are going to bite. So when I say slack water, what exactly do I mean? Well, take a look at the water behind me. That's a good example. It doesn't mean water that doesn't have current. Largemouth bass still like to be around current. They don't necessarily like to be right up in it like a smallmouth or a spot is, but they like to be around it. Like any bass, they like to have their food brought to them. But because I don't have electronics on my boat, the thing about slack water is that's when the bass are busting. And it allows me to visually target right where they are. And busting bass are active bass. That means that generally they're feeding. So they're easier to catch. So that's usually why I'm able to do so much better when I find that slack water. And today was no different. When I got out here at the lake today, I noticed that we had a little bit of a wind and it was swirling, which is the worst possible thing imaginable because there's no consistency to it. There's no way to set up and get on a good pattern based on the wind, right? It, it's changing all the time. And like I said, out here on the big lake, it seems to be hypersensitive to those sorts of situations. You know, a good breeze, a little bit of a breeze that blows my little boat along so I can just make casts and cover water. To me, that's a perfect day. I can catch fish like that. But a good gusty day when it's 20, 25 mile an hour winds and, you know, or they're swirling all over the place and I can't, 
I can't set up one way or the other, and I constantly have to be making certain adjustments with my little boat. And even from the bank, that can be a real headache, especially when you want to fish something lighter, and that wind blows your line one way, blows your line the another way, and you find you're having to tie on a way heavier weight than you actually wanted or need to. And you know, the fish don't care, right? They don't care that it's windy up there. They see that heavier weight rocketing by them. It either turns them off completely, they don't want to have anything to do with it, or it scares them. You've got to have the right weight, and having the wind has a lot to do with that. So again, slack water. So when I can find that slack water, I know that that's the best chance for me to be able to figure out what those fish want for that day. Because every day is different. Every day is new. You know, I don't go out to the water with a preconceived notion of this is what the fish are going to bite. I have an idea of what they may go after, but it's not until I get on the water and I'm fishing that I know for sure. So I see the slack water. It lets me know. I can see the fish jumping. I can see the fish busting. I can target them a lot easier. Then I can start working baits that tell me what those bass are actually really interested in. And today was no different. Despite how rough everything was, despite losing my sunglasses, my favorite pair of sunglasses, right? I was able to make this process work. So when that wind finally calmed down for just a little bit, I was able to work my oldest jerkbait, that ugly Smithwick Rattlin' Rogue, that thing is just so gnarly and ugly. But I was able to put it to work as a change of pace bait, and well, this is the result of what happened. All right, I have tied on the ugliest bait that I own, and that's this guy right here, this Smithwick Rattlin' Road. That rattling, rattling rogue, and that thing I'm telling you what is ugly, 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 but it catches fish. I can't tell you how many fish I've caught with that thing, it's a bunch. And you wouldn't think it would work. You know, I mean, you wouldn't think that that ugly color, I don't know of any fish in my fishery that looks anything like that. But I'm telling you what, this thing sure gets attention. Right there we go. There we go. I got him. Oh, that's good. That's a big fish. That's a big fish. Stay down. Told you. The old Smithwick rattling rogue. Ooh, come on. He went after it too. He went after it. That's a good fish. He T-boned it. He wanted that thing. Little, I don't know, one and a quarter pound bass. Nothing huge, nothing amazing, but really good. And he hit it like a ton of bricks. Thank you, little buddy. We sure do appreciate that. There he goes. All right, let's go get another one. So you see, that water calmed down. Before then, it was a rough, rough day. But as soon as that water became slack and I started seeing those fish bust, you know, like I said, no electronics, that's my telltale sign. That's what I'm using to go after those bass, signs of life, right? When I'm out on the water, I'm looking for signs of life. If I don't see bass busting, I'm looking for shad, minnow, bluegill. I'm looking for those types of things swimming around in the water. But if I'm out deep, if I'm in deeper water, chances are I'm not going to be able to see that around me. I have to mainly rely on those bass busting up, which is what I did today. And Obviously, when that water calmed down, I was able to use that rattling row to catch a nice fish. It was a nice way to get the skunk out of the boat. But I went further north and I found a nice secluded pocket of really shallow, heavy vegetated water that was just slick, calm. It was exactly what I was looking for. And, well, I took out that jerk bait, and this is what happened. I want to fish this pocket really pretty thoroughly. I want to fish this pocket pretty thoroughly. There we go, I got him. Ooh, that's a nice one. That's a nice one. Uh -uh. I knew you were back here, buddy. Ah, come here, you. Ooh, that is a really nice one. 
and you were not going anywhere. I knew I saw you back here. I had you good. I had you really good. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. All right. Beautiful, beautiful two pound bass. Thank you so much for playing, biting that weightless fluke. All right, let's go catch another one. So a nice two pound bass. Because that water was calm, I was able to find those fish. I was able to see those fish being active and I wasn't casting to empty water. Like we said in the last video, casting to empty water is not going to catch anybody any fish. So it helps to know where they are. It helps to already know where those active bass are at. And using a weightless fluke in a situation like that, it's practically cheating. It's hard for those bass to resist, especially if they're busting up on bait fish, they're colliding with those fish, and they're stunning them. So a weightless, soft plastic jerkbait just imitates those dying shad, those stunned shad, or shiners, or whatever. It imitates them so well as they flutter around, as they sink to the bottom. Bass can't resist them. So that was my secret weapon in that particular instance, and it caught me a nice bass. So at the end of the day, it turned out to be a really nice day. That water, you know, it calmed down. You can see it's practically a mirror finish out there now. And I was able to start really putting some patterns together because I was able to decipher what those fish were really after. Like I said, it's my secret trick. I don't see a lot of guys doing it. I see guys getting frustrated, you know, especially guys who have electronics. If you have electronics, you tend to use those as a crutch and rather than your surroundings, rather than letting the environment and bass behavior tell you what's going on, you rather look at your electronics. But for some reason on this lake, they shut off when that wind starts blowing and when the wind calms down and that water smooths out, that's when the action really heats up. Now, it may not be that way on all fisheries, but the point of this story is, is look for those active bass, those active busting bass, that sign of life, those signs of life around you. I can't tell you how important that is, how monumental that is to turning a bad day into a good day and putting yourself on fish when everybody else around you is struggling. So there you have it. My secret tip, my super secret tip that I use, pull out of my back pocket, whenever those bites are hard, whenever it's struggling out there, I just look for the slack water. And from there, I'm always able to at least put a couple of fish in the boat, if nothing else. It's what works for me. Give it a try. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.